there is a daily requirement for salt yes as human beings we are to ingest salt on daily basis the average adult is to take in 2300 milligrams of salt which is equivalent to about one teaspoon of salt because salt has been vilified for many years for causing hypertension most adults are not taking in salt yet most adults have high blood pressure what if i told you that your blood pressure is caused by excessive carbohydrate intake please allow me to explain My name is Dr. Enim, Dr. Pharmacist and a functional medicine doctor. And again, welcome to the channel. So what is blood pressure? By definition, it is cardiac output multiplied by peripheral vascular resistance. There are three things that governs blood pressure. The first one is the pump. The heart is a pump. So the heart pumps the blood through the aorta, through the subclavian artery. Then we measure it in the brachial artery or the radial artery. So when we measure blood pressure, it's a direct measure of the pump. So that's one factor. The second factor is the narrowness and the elasticity of the pipes of the arteries of the blood vessels so the narrowness or the elasticity or the propensity of the arteries to enlarge determines the pressure the third and the final thing that governs hypertension or blood pressure is volume so when the heart pumps shunts the blood through the blood vessel depending on the elasticity depending on the narrowness we get the volume so the volume is critically important now salt 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 is the master regulator of these three things so salt is critically important salt is not the issue why your blood pressure is there is a daily requirement for that your blood pressure may be caused by excessive carbohydrate intake which increases insulin insulin causes a hormone called aldosterone to rise in the presence of aldosterone there's a water retention and the salt retention that will cause your blood pressure to rise because there's an increase of volume in the vascular space insulin will cause endothelial thickening and in the presence of endothelial thickening there's decreased nitric oxide production nitric oxide is produced in the endothelial layer of the arteries where the blood flows so in the presence of sugar in the presence of insulin you are not having that happen damage the endothelial layer and nitric oxide is decreased if your source of carbohydrate is fructose based then it causes nitric oxide to also rise in the presence of nitric oxide there's less blood flow and that can cause hypertension and that is why clinically when I have hypertensive patients I check their uric acid levels now let me also digress and talk about the endothelial thickening for a minute when we have people in practice when you have folks in their 20s in their 30s newborn babies kids between two and five which by the way they are the fastest demographics of obesity the two-year-olds and the five-year-olds when they have hypertension we are looking at them as volume based hypertension because endothelial thickening happens over time so when when you have 40 year olds, when you have 50 year olds, when you have 60 year olds come in with hypertension, we look at endothelial thickening because that accumulates over time. You see the younger folks having endothelial thickening only when they are smoking. Beyond that, we reserve the endothelial issues or the blood vascular conditioning for the 40 year olds, the 50 year olds, and the 60 year olds. So those are some of the things that I want to get across. Now, in the presence of high insulin, you raise cortisol, which is a stress hormone that further causes sugar to rise and that can cause a lot of inflammation. In the presence of cortisol, you activate the sympathetic nervous system, which is the flight or fight response, causes the heart to race and blood pressure to increase. Now, if you are listening to me and you are hypertensive and your doctor said, I don't know what is causing hypertension, it means you have essential hypertension ladies and gentlemen that is also called carbophilic hypertension if you are that individual then you want to start paying attention to these numbers even if you are not pre-diabetic i advise that you get a glucometer to check your blood glucose if you check your blood glucose every morning and your numbers are beyond 100 milligram per deciliter it is a red flag that that may be the reason why your blood pressure is up. If you have never been tested for hemoglobin A1C, you want to do that. And don't be ill advised that hemoglobin A1C of 5.6 is good. No, it is not. 5.5 is not. 5.4 is not. And 5.3 is not. You want to be below 5.2. And we are not just paying attention to the 5.2 number here. We are going to look at other parameters. What is your fasting insulin saying? Because 
some people they may have beautiful a1c yet high levels of fasting insulin which is a red flag so we want to know your fasting insulin is it less than five we want you to be less than five uric acid you may not have gout but if your uric acid is more than 5.5 it is a, also a red flag and that may be the reason why your blood pressure may be high now triglycerides which is indicative that there is fat in your blood there are two things that usually drives the triglycerides alcohol and carbohydrates in mainstream medicine the upper limit is 149 so anytime it goes beyond 149 49 that means you are doing too much triglycerides but everybody should be less than 100 i shoot for 75 or lower anything more than that it means you are doing too much carbohydrate and that may be the reason for your high blood pressure so this lab markers i would like you to pay attention to the next time you are with your doctor these tests are not that expensive if your doctor refuses to do it pay out of pocket to do it especially if you are looking to get off your long standing hypertensive medications how can you get off all these medications how can you get your doctor to deprescribe all the medications the first thing is you need to lower your carbohydrates you need to come low on the sugars it can be the most organic honey you can do it you want to take that out you want to limit your carbohydrates no bread no pasta no grains you want to increase your quality fat intake grass fed meat pasta raised eggs wild caught fish those are the things you want to do you want to increase your quality fat intake the olive oil the avocado oil the lard the ghee the nuts and seeds you want to optimize sleep if you are not sleeping you are causing your cortisol to rise and in the presence of high cortisol you cause damage to your endothelial layer of your brain because you increase insulin whatever your stress levels are you want to address what is causing in your stress or stressing your body will increase cortisol exercise move that body is very critical once you exercise you decrease your insulin and increase insulin sensitivity these are very critical things that we want to put in place if you want to get off our medications and not just that to optimize our health hypertension is a silent killer it causes eye issues retinopathy it causes kidney injury it causes heart disease it causes stroke it causes heart attack just about 95% of the population are insulin resistant and that is fair to say that most hypertensives are insulin resistant and their hypertension especially those labeled essential hypertension ladies and gentlemen is carbophilic hypertension and those are the carbohydrate addicts come down on the carbohydrates and reverse the issues that you are dealing with as far as your hypertension is concerned if you have come this far with me i believe this channel is for you please don't forget to like Don't forget to follow, don't forget to share, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe so that we can keep this dialogue going. Until the next video, we'll see you again later. Thank you.